Hey everybody, today I want to do a, a, a comparison between two big powerhouses. On the left hand side here, I have the uh, MacBook Air from Apple. This is the 11 inch MacBook Air. And this is going to go head to head with the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 from Microsoft. More Microsoft claims that this tablet uh, can replace your laptop. So let's see how, how true this is and let's compare these two powerhouses. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle of the Heavyweights. The fight that we've all been waiting for. In the left corner, weighing in at a total combined weight of tablet and keyboard of 887 grams, we have the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. Yay! And in the right corner, our sleek looking 1.08 kilogram weighing MacBook Air. This is the 2014 version. This one was launched early 2014. So let's put these two head to head and do a comparison. Let the fight begin. Ding ding. If you prefer the authentic laptop experience, then the Apple MacBook Air is definitely a great recommendation for you. Now, if you're a fan of the Windows operating system, then it's your decision should be pretty straightforward. Get the Surface Pro 3. What's great now is that even if you have a Surface Pro 3 with Windows 8.1 or 8, or even if you had for some weird reason Windows 7 on this thing, when Microsoft has given you a free upgrade to Windows 10, and the version you're looking at here, it is Windows 10. Although the, the screen resolution on this is not the best right now in the market since it's a 2014 model, uh, I mean the fact that there are other uh, Windows devices out here today over the past year that have launched uh, that are lighter and thinner and even have better better looking screens, especially when compared to the Surface Pro 3, um, you still cannot beat the hardware-software combination of this MacBook Air. And may I add, for this particular video, I'm using 2014 MacBook Air. But FYI, there was a 2015 version that was launched earlier this year, and um, that has uh, a retina display. So that pretty much puts this on par with the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 tablet. And when it comes to the screen, as you can see, the Surface Pro 3 screen is gorgeous, uh, to the point where it is on par with that of Apple's MacBook Air. Might I also add that the screen is huge. This thing end-to-end -end, diagonally is about is 12 inches. So it's a huge, huge screen. Did I mention that the Surface Pro 3 screen is huge? A whopping 12 inches diagonally? Look, look at my hand. I have my whole hand on the screen, open, stretched open, and there's still space around my hand. That's a huge screen, man. So both have pretty nice screens. Uh, one point to note is that the Surface 3 screen is about 16% larger than the Mac uh, screen. Of course, this is 11.6 inches, and this one is a 12 inch screen. So from a weight perspective, the MacBook Air is very nice and light. And when compared to the Surface Pro 3, uh, there's negligible difference in the weight. I think it's just, you know, maybe 1% heavier than the MacBook, than the uh, Surface Pro 3. When we're looking at the look and feel, again, Apple has knocked it out of the park. They're a MacBook Air. It's based on a unibody build, and the actual metal is aluminium. So, you know, aluminium, that metal that's used in airplanes, very, very strong, but very, very light. Kudos to Apple. The Microsoft Surface 3 also has a magnesium body, which feels solid in the hand, and, you know, you can tell it's really a, an expensive piece of equipment. The keyboard and trackpad on the MacBook Air is, you know, it's incredible. Uh, the trackpad itself is actually 60% larger than on the Surface Pro 3. And um, I mean, you know, if you want to argue then, yeah, do we have a, a superior trackpad here and, 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 and keyboard? But the Surface Pro 3, they could argue, well, we have uh, a Surface Pen and we have a touchscreen. Right? So, but again, very two strong points. Not bad keyboard. Microsoft has truly outdone itself this time. 
because what it has done is given you that two-in-one form factor where if you want just a tablet you can have a powerful huge screen tablet ultra light with its own own kickstand with windows 10 installed and if you want to have the laptop experience you can simply throw in a keyboard which is attachable by a magnetic connection just like that and throw in a stylus which uh, works off of Bluetooth to give you that extra functionality you have a complete laptop. On previous service models um, you could not put this on your lap because it would just flop around but what Microsoft has done they've actually um, made it that you can actually move this portion this lip and attach it to the tablet to give it that extra um, stability so this can actually rest on your lap and it will feel like a really secure laptop. It won't flop around and it will stay there while you type. On the MacBook Air you get about 9 hours of normal use which is roughly the same as on the Surface Pro 3 as well. But let's be real, I take my hats off to Apple for this one when it comes to comparing keyboards and track pads. You know, Microsoft, yeah, this is all plastic and smaller trackpad, feels cheap. This is much higher quality and it's, you know, Apple's, Apple's keyboard and trackpad. You just can't beat it. So Apple wins on that one when it comes to keyboards and trackpads. Hats off to Microsoft for making the Surface Pen. This pen is actually a battery powered active capacitive pen and it has very, very smooth digital inking. So by smooth digital inking, I'm talking about the fact that it really feels like you're using a real pen on a piece of paper with this thing. Uh, the design, a lot has gone into the design as well. It has a nice metallic feel and weight to it. And there are some buttons here on the side which are like mouse buttons. One button is used to crop and move around objects. The other button is used as an eraser to erase objects. And then this button at the top, you press it twice, it actually opens your OneNote application where you can start taking instant notes. Um, so this is, you know, one of the cool differentiators for the um, Surface 3, uh, this pen. And um, what is good about it as well, it has a technology built into it where it's pressure sensitive. So if you are to write with this and press on the screen, the, 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 the thickness of the line gets, gets, gets thicker. So the Surface Pen is ideal if you're doing like graphic design or jogging notes. And it's also a nice mouse equivalent if you just want to navigate um, on, on, on the screen. Instead of using your finger, you can just use the pen, right? Which I find is very, very uh, convenient. So while the MacBook Air has a much, much better keyboard and trackpad, and it's even larger than the Surface Pro 3's plastic keyboard and trackpad, where the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 kind of stands out in its own right is that it has a touchscreen, which you can use, right? And it has a stylus as well that it comes with, right? So, the battle continues. From a performance standpoint, these two both have four gigabytes of RAM and come with Intel Core i5 processors. Uh, benchmarking tests pretty much showed that the results were roughly the same as far as speed. Um, no major difference between the two. When it comes to the number of touch-based apps in the Windows App Store, um, it's not like a huge library that you find, uh, of course, in the Apple Store, right, through iTunes. Um, however, if you are somebody who uses a lot of the traditional Windows apps, then, you know, and you want a true Windows experience, this definitely will be the tablet for you. But, yeah, going to the Windows Store. I mean, there are apps there, and as time goes on, there will be more apps, uh, games and, and you know, productivity apps and whatnot. But right now, when compared to what you can get on the Apple platform, it's uh, like chalk and cheese. Two different, two different experiences altogether. So to conclude, when it comes to touch-based apps and the number of touch-based apps you can find on the Windows Store, when compared to the number of touch-based apps you can find on the Windows Store in an Apple Store, um, yeah, it's, you can't compare the, the, the uh, Apple has way more titles than, it, than what you can find when it comes to touch-based apps on the. So when it comes to ports, uh, the MacBook Air has one and two USB 3.0 ports. The Surface Pro 3 only has one port. The MacBook Air also has a, a Thunderbolt port, which 
which is com uh, backwards compatible with the mini display port. And of course that's the power port right there and your audio jack. So whereas the MacBook Air has two USB ports while the Surface 3 only has one USB 3.0 port, there is a port here where you can add um, additional storage via a micro SD card so you can put that card here and the store you can actually use up to 120 gigabyte card um, for additional storage which is a very very good good deal and the Surface Pro 3 also has um, a, a, a mini display port uh, for video out and with this as well if you want to do um, a wireless uh, connection to a flat screen television there is uh, a display adapter that you can get. It's a USB form factor, and you can get that. And it retails for around, uh, I think it's about $60 or so. And from a price perspective, let's compare the MacBook Air, the 11 inch, to the, and both of these have the i5 core processor in them. So this is the Service Pro 3 and the MacBook Air. The Service Pro 3 starts at $930 roughly and that comes with 64 gigs of storage, and that's the i3 model. This particular one, however, um, sells for about $1,100, $1,130 to be exact, um, compared to this, um, which starts at $900, and with this you get 128 gigabytes of storage, and you get the i5 CPU. Um, so if we're comparing light for light, Core i5 processor to Core i5 processor, um, this is a little bit more expensive because it's $1130 and this one is $900. So on the price perspective, comparing the i5s together, the MacBook Air would be a bit more of an affordable uh, buy. So final verdict, I think it's a tie. To be honest, it all depends on your preference. You're going to be using these devices, right? So let's say on the one hand, if you have a preference for, for Windows applications and Windows devices, then the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. If you want to have um, a solid laptop that you know gives you that 100% laptop experience, lightweight, easy to use, and it's just a laptop, get the MacBook Air. Again, you know if you're looking at price, um, if you really really have to, if you want a good performing uh, unit, I would definitely recommend the i5 processor. Um, I won't get the i3; it's a little bit slower. Uh, and in that case, then the MacBook Air, you can save about $230 if you bought the, uh, the i5 version of the MacBook Air versus the uh, Surface 3 i5, right? Um, again, you know, if you want to have that extra versatility where you're gonna be, you know, you, you want to do, um, you need a stylus or a pen in this case, and you need, you know, to do sketches and you need to have a tablet experience while having the best of both worlds, go for the Surface 3, all right? Now, if you want to have a, access to a wealth of, you know, applications um, that are not Windows-based, that are Apple-based, obviously get them out from here. Um, they're both way about the same, um, and uh, you know, they both give you pretty, pretty good viewing experience. As I said, this particular MacBook Air was launched in 2014, so it didn't, so right now, I mean, the screen on the Surface 3 here in this in this video looks much better than this one. But the MacBook Air recently came up with a 2015 version which has a retina, dis uh, retina um, display and the screen is a bit bigger. So screen for screen they're on par. Um, and next week the Surface 4 is going to be coming out. Surface 4 actually has a, more, a much improved uh, pen. Uh, the keyboard is improved as well. Um, and I do have a video on the specs on the Surface Pro 4. I will be doing a video once I get my hands on one to give you a, a, a real demo in person. But just high level, the keyboard is improved now. The keys actually protrude up. Um, the, the, the stylus can actually stick to the side of the screen. Um, the screen again is a bit bigger. Same physical form factor, but the screen is bigger, meaning that the bezel is gonna be a bit smaller and there's a lot bit, bit more horsepower and memory um, um, stuffed on the inside. But Regarding these two, I think you know, depending on your preference of OS um, and, and usability, and you know your different use cases, um, you know they're they're pretty much are are are, are identical machines to me. Uh, but both very great buys. Each have their pros and cons. So again, uh, thanks for for stay tuning and listening to this this review. I hope you uh, had some fun. 
and uh, there are, it will be a link at the bottom of this, of this video where you can actually get these off of Amazon.